Hey y'all, welcome to the Capitol Report. I'm Camille and I'll be keeping you up to date with what's going on in the capital city of Baton Rouge. Last week was the first week of special session and the legislators got straight to work. Let's start in the Senate. With a full consensus last Tuesday, the Senate Finance Committee agreed to measures that would utilize $128 million from the rainy day fund and redirect $200 million from the Gulf oil spill recovery money to help rebalance the budget before the fiscal year ends on June 30th. Those two pieces of legislation have passed with a full vote in the Senate and have moved to the House. Now, let's move on to the House. We'll start by going over what happened in the House Ways and Means Committee. If you remember, that is the committee which handles matters related to taxes, raising revenue, bonds, and debt, issues that are very important to our state's current financial situation. Chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, Representative Neil Abramson, first went over the committee structure and the general process the committee would be going through. Abramson stated that his committee reached a consensus to start voting on potential tax increases only once they have heard testimony on all of the potential tax legislation. They are looking at upward of 60 bills, so it might take them a little more time than initially expected, but the members want to know what they should support based on their assessment of all of the options on the table. During the process of hearing the bills, Thursday, Abramson chose to adjourn at noon because there were no more bills to review until fiscal notes were posted by the Legislative Fiscal Office's chief economist. Although this seems like a setback for a short time period, Representative Jim Morris, a Republican from Oil City, said he was confident that once the committee is in a position to vote, the bills will be acted upon very quickly. All right, let's move on to the House Appropriations Committee. This is the committee that oversees the tax policy, and this time around, actually about a third of the committee is made up of new legislators. This committee spent the week hearing testimony from state agencies, focusing heavily on understanding their operations in an attempt to uncover potential cost savings. Let's move on to what you can expect for this week. We anticipate that the Senate Revenue and Fiscal Affairs Committee will meet to further discuss the budget crisis and solutions. We also expect, more specifically, that Senator Brett Alain's constitutional amendment to repeal the local inventory tax and replace the revenue through a local investment fund will be on the docket for this week. Business has actually advocated for this repeal for quite a while. Let me break down the inventory tax credit and what this amendment ultimately would do. The inventory tax credit is the method used by Louisiana to reimburse taxpayers for the cost of the annual local property taxes paid on the value of inventories. Put simply, right now, under the local inventory tax rule, businesses are taxed on their inventory of their property. This tax, after it is collected, goes to the local government. The state then refunds the money the company pays to the local government back to the company. What Senator Allah is attempting to accomplish with his amendment is to cut businesses out of this equation. The state would just pay the local government through the local investment fund. No one loses any money. Businesses would just not have to pay and then ultimately be refunded anyway. All right, while we do not have a calendar of exactly what is going to take place, if tax raising revenues are a part of the solution, they will need to begin moving sometime this week. We'll keep monitoring the committees and tracking the bills so that we can keep you updated on what goes on at the Capitol. In some other news, first, Governor John Bell Edwards has appointed former Jefferson Parish Assessor Lawrence Shahardi, a Republican from Metairie, as chairman of the Louisiana Tax Commission, the agency that oversees parish tax assessors statewide. Second, Louisiana Attorney General Jeff Landry stated that his office is terminating state contracts with DAs that previous Attorney General Buddy Caldwell had approved. Finally, I wanted to bring your attention to the most recent suits against the oil and gas industry. Cameron Parish filed 11 lawsuits against over 100 oil and gas companies. These suits come at an extremely difficult time for our industry and for our state. But don't forget to stay up to date. You can sign up to receive our news blasts and we can more readily inform you of any updates with these suits. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to follow Loga for up-to-date news on the oil and gas industry and the 2016 legislative session. Until next time, this is Camille Ivy O'Donnell with Loga TV.